Hello and welcome to the second video in the Shop Made Tools and Upgrade series of uh, videos. So I had a comment in the first video, one of the viewers wanted me to uh, do a video on this belt grinder that you know, you've seen in um, a lot of the videos. Uh, the design of this belt grinder was from Jeremy Smith. I'll put some links in the description. Uh, so he's got actually, you know, like a build videos on this. I didn't actually take any video when I was making this uh, belt grinder, but I did take a lot of photos and I'll talk through that soon. But Jeremy does have some build videos and if you want more information, um, have a look at those videos. They're quite good. This is um, the Generation 1, so it's the, the older one. He's got a later video that's come out not so long ago. Uh, with generation 2 so um, it's pretty much the same grinder but a few little differences and improvements most of the tools I build in the workshop here um, are just from watching videos and trying to find all the good features on tools and then sort of combine that into my own design but for this particular project I actually bought the uh, plans from Jeremy I can't remember exactly how much they were, it wasn't a lot, it's like $20 or, or something I think. Um, but certainly the plans were detailed and you know, along with the videos, it was quite an easy build uh, to be honest. So I'll just run through some of the functions and then um, I'll put a series of photos that I took when I was making this grinder and I'll talk about those as we go through. So the good thing about this design, unlike some of the other designs, is that it is a tilting um, grinder. So when you tilt it, this table here actually stays still. So we can tilt it around 90 degrees, table is still, you can still put your work on here and you've got horizontal grinding. And that was just a matter of a, a lever I've made up. Um, you know, typically you have a nut on here with a spanner, but I just made a lever just to make it easier. Um, and then you can lift it back up and just tighten that lever up. There's a lot of adjustments in here. So there's another lever here where the table can come out. I mean, the table can be totally removed and replaced with some other attachment. Um, the table also can be lift it up and down so this is useful when you have it in the horizontal mode uh, you can then set where you want the grinding to be on the paper so you know it'll be horizontal and you can have the table higher or lower and there's also an adjustment on the platinum here that's that's connected to a bar that goes in this tube and uh, that can be adjusted so if your belts are a little bit shorter you can slide it in. If you have longer belts, you can slide it out uh, to take up some of the slack. So plenty of adjustment around there. The belts are very easy to come off. There's just a spring in here. So it's spring loaded. You pull that forward and the belt can come off. And then just place it in the front, around the wheel at the back. Bring it forward again and it springs there. It's got an adjustment here for your tracking if you watch jeremy's video you'll see how all this was built in a lot of detail so i mean there's a few things in here that are sort of my own there's a little wheel here so you can loosen the nut off and have some fine adjustment there lock it down i've put a handle on there i think he had a wooden handle that's a steel one so a few little differences the motor we have at the back here is um, an old pool motor uh, so you know for a swimming pool I think it's around about a one horse motor and to be honest it's powerful enough I think uh, Jeremy was saying on his videos that he had a one and a half horsepower motor and that was kind of on the borderline of being too small but I find this motor has been pretty fine I've you know used um, very coarse paper and, and ground you know lots of metal so you know it does slow down if you really push the work on here very hard but um it 
that works pretty good for what I need it to do. I do actually have a VFD and a three phase motor um, that I want to put on here and I'm not sure if I'll put it on here or if I'll actually make the generation 2 belt grinder and, um, and put it on that one. So still deciding what to do there. I mean, you know, building another belt grinder is quite a bit of work, but then, you know, that could be a lot of fun as well. So I think I'll um, put up some pictures of the build and I'll talk through those and you'll uh, get a lot more insight on how this uh, machine was built. The first parts of the grinder that uh, you need to make are the, are the main tubes. So this is where the uh, platen goes in and also the, uh, the table and other attachments. In this case I use flat bar 10 millimeters thick and 60 millimeters wide that's for the top and the bottom and on the sides it was 10 millimeters thick and 40 millimeters wide and you can see to the far right uh, there's a square bar that uh, goes down the center of it so what i did here is i clamped it together but i used uh, shims from a soda can you know a bit of aluminium i can't quite remember how many i used jeremy has it in his video what he uses and i think to be on the safe side, I used, uh, you know, an extra one or something like that. But this came out pretty good. And, you know, you can see it's tacked there at the moment, but uh, it gets f fully welded. And this is what it looks like when those uh, two tubes are done. And you can see on one of them, I've actually uh, made the base and the feet for it. And that's kind of how they sit together when they're, you know, built in the machine. So these are the uh, hinges, you'll see it more in the next video, but I welded them or tacked them all together just so that I could drill the hole in the same place on all of them. And funny story here, when I was building this, we were in a level four lockdown and level four in New Zealand is, you know, nothing is open apart from your petrol stations, your grocery stores and your medical facilities. So my electric bandsaw, the blade broke on it and I couldn't even go online and order one and get it delivered. So there's nothing, you couldn't do anything like that in our lockdowns. And in the end, all I had was a, a handful of cutoff wheels that you'd use on an angle grinder. And I do really feel sorry for the neighbor at the back of the garage because, you know, night after night I was cutting out parts and all that sort of stuff for, for these projects and it must have been, you know, grinder going every night. So um, I, I did feel sorry for him. And here I am just setting everything up here. The hinge assembly sort of just sits on top there. You position it right. I have a steel bar going down the center and I think Jeremy talks about this in his videos. And what I did is I just made a bar and put threads on each end and then I was able to use the nuts to lock all that stuff together and that worked out pretty good and you know the hinge mechanism uh, worked fine once it was all welded in place and the next step was to work on the back plate or, or the motor plate um, and that also has a bit that goes up the top for the tracking arm and tensioner and then I start working on the platen at the front there and that was kind of tricky and you'll see if you watch Jeremy's video how tricky it is and in the second video he has a, a more simplified you know the, the generation two these wheels these are steel wheels and you can see what I made it out of on the bench there it's a bit of rusty square bar I think that's 50 mil by 50 mil or it might be a fraction over and I put that in the lathe and turned it down and took a little bit of time to get it down but the wheels came out pretty good in the end you know got some bearings for them and there's spaces I think in there as well so all the pressures you know on that center part of the bearing where it bolts on and yeah they work pretty good the tracking wheel at the top right there you can see a sort of line down the middle so I had to put um, an angle on that both sides and I did that in the lathe um, and I can't remember what that was. It was might have been two or three degrees. I can't remember. 
but um you know that needs to be done so that you can adjust the belt otherwise uh you know if it's a flat wheel and it's not in the right position the belt will just uh, slide off uh, the, the rollers and that's pretty much it the grinder done and you can see my um three-year-old helper in the back there because of the design of this grinder and the way it tilts when it's upright like this the motor is horizontal however when it tilts the motor goes down so i had to make a custom bench for the grinder to go on and it has a little cutaway at the back there you can see that the frame screws against the wall but then there's a section where there's no frame uh, directly behind the grinder and that's a cavity for where the uh, motor swings into when it you know you're tilted over 90 degrees you can actually see it a little bit better here with the top on the bench and also had to build the bench around a um a pump there to the bottom right uh, that is the pump for the rainwater tanks that we have just on the other side of the wall here on the outside of the garage yeah that pump was just sort of sitting there on the bracket on the floor and you know i thought well if i'm going to put a table here i'll build around it and then it's sort of secured and you know not getting kicked when i sort of walk past it and this is the probably the first time i bolted down the unit onto the table um, so it's all looking nice and flash there with its paint job that you know with any tool never lasts so the next step was to build the wheels and I didn't have any aluminium melting facilities or anything like that and buying five or six inch round stock is just uh, crazy in New Zealand so the other plan was to make it out of plywood and here I think these are three pieces of plywood which are 20 millimeters thick each and put them together so I end up with you know 60 millimeter wide wheel and these are all being glued together and there's screws that um, hold it all together as well then I turn it all up in the lathe so it's you know turned down to the right diameter and and flat across for the belt to ride on this was probably the first time I ran the grinder I can see there's um, a test piece sitting on the table there now that motor you see in the background as I mentioned earlier that's a motor out of a pool like you know a, an outside swimming pool and it sort of ran okay there was no issues with it but there were some plastic pieces and you can see one of them's disappeared altogether that's the bit um, at the end where the fan is it used to be all plastic and it, it just cracked and fell off and then yes that's right there's green masking tape holding on the capacitor housing which is plastic as well so that is all cracked and that was falling off so the motor wasn't in good shape it kind of was quite noisy as well so the bearings were probably a bit dry and it got to a point where the bearings were making a lot of noise and i actually had to pull it all down and do some maintenance on it and you can see in this shot i've you know made another housing at the end there you know it's not a perfect thing but uh, it, you know it does the job keeps your fingers out of the back there and getting chopped off also the capacitor housing i you know made up i mean these things actually took quite a lot of time fiddling around and cutting little strips and welding them on and making sure the holes are in the right place but it's all solid and secure now which is pretty good at the same time i put new bearings in here so you know the motor runs yeah, pretty good again so once I'd uh, finished the grinder, you saw uh, earlier I had a table in there and that table was just a 90 degree table. It's a fixed welded table. This one here, this is actually what Jeremy calls a, a radius jig. He's got a video on the radius jig and his looks a little bit different to mine. I think he just has one hole. But I wanted to make this with a bit of flexibility. So those dowels that you see sticking up, there's 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 millimeter dowels. And they just push in. They're like spring-loaded, you know, with ball bearing, detent in there. So they push down and they just stay in there. And then there's positions where these can be. Um, and you can't really see it on this picture, but it's like 10 millimeters away from the edge, then 30 millimeters, then 50 millimeters. 
And what it means is with this lever down the bottom, I've got some flexibility to take all those um, dowels out of there and I put the right one in that I'm using if I'm doing like a 12 millimeter hole or a 10 millimeter hole. I'll put that in and it depends, you know, how far away from the edge of the metal the, the hole is drilled. So if it's, you know, a typical thing, it's usually 10 millimeters, something like that. So use the front hole. If it's further back and you wanted to put a radius there, um, then you could do that by putting it in the, the hole further back. Or if you have bigger plates that have holes further back and you want bigger radius ground on them, then you'd use holes further back. And the 20 millimeter distances are able to be made up with this bar and, you know, the way the mechanism works. So it has some flexibility to come away and to move closer to the, to the grinding belt. This was a, a lot of thinking and planning and challenge. I did send some photos to Jeremy and he said, you know, well done, you've done a great job. So this is sort of how it works. I mean, you can have the belt in that orientation or you could have it straight up and down. It doesn't matter. But your bit of work it goes on the dowel and then you just swivel it, you know, left and right. And then the lever that you have down the bottom, you can bring it closer in to the uh, grinding belt. And then you get something like that as a result. That's just pretty cool. So right at the beginning of the video, when I was showing the grinder, it had a different table on it. And this is a tilting table. Again, Jeremy's got the video on this. I think he might have some plans with it. And this allows you to have the table in 90 degrees or, or down to 45 degrees. And this came in very useful. You might have seen me when I was building the vise. And I was putting those 45 degree chamfers on the side of those plates for the vise. So that's what I used here. I don't use the fixed table anymore because this one does 90 degrees, which is the fixed table position anyway. You know, also it's easy enough to just loosen off the nut and get it to 45 degrees or, or something even in between that if I need it. And I think this is the only image I had of building this part. So I think at this point I'm getting the front little plates and the back little plate ready to weld in there. But I'll put up a shot of the finished table from underneath so you can see what it looks like. And that's pretty much about it for the um, build of the belt grinder. You know, it was a good little project to be honest. I'll tell you what, it makes it a lot easier when you've got the plans. At the time, the Generation 1 plans, he only had Imperial measurements. You know, in New Zealand we're metric here, so all the sizes of the metal are metric, so a little bit of fidgeting around to make things work. But I understand his Generation 2 plans are, you know, he has them in metric as well, so people living in the metric countries can, um, can get them. So happy to see what your thoughts and comments are, you know, leave a comment. I do try to reply to all the comments. I appreciate, um, you know, you're sticking around and, and watching the video. And uh, there'll be more of these shop made tools and upgrade videos coming. If you have seen that I've been using a tool um, in one of my other videos and you want to know more about it or you want me to do a video on it, just um, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.